Test. Test for echo. Test. Test. Test for echo. This is the Loud Boy experience. It almost wasn't, though. Earlier today, my channel was offline, and I didn't know why. I couldn't access it. All of a sudden, I get an email. There were vague reasons. Reasons that bother me. It was just, I have no idea why. It was offline. That hit me hard. I sat still for an hour, literally, and I contained the frustration and anger, confusion that I felt in that moment. Wow. It hit me hard because I think you know why. I've been doing this now since about the beginning of this year. Had almost 200 videos. There's much less now. So I sat there, confused, definitely angry, frustrated, but I didn't act on it. And wow, was that a test? I was tested earlier, big time. I'd like to think I passed, though. I reached out to my mom and dad. I asked them to pray for me. About an hour later, after that first email, I get another email. Oh, upon further review, when we took another look at your content, I guess, and it said, you, you're not violating our terms. Okay. Do, if, if the algorithm or whatever nerd sitting in a closet only knew that I've had open heart quadruple bypass surgery and you have no idea the stress I was under and then, oh, upon review, oh, you're good. What was that? Amazing. So yeah, we're, we're still here. We're back. There's a lot of question marks right now. And I don't know if it's all about free speech. I don't know if it's about specific content. I don't know if it's the things that I've said. I don't know if it's copyright. So forgive me for saying the things I don't know, because I don't know. And it's really frustrating, but I'm still here. We are still here. And I thank you for being here. This is a loud boy experience. That almost wasn't <laughs> amazing. Truly amazing. First of all, let's get right to it. I have more than one black v-neck shirt. If you only knew, I have at least 20 that, you know, they're in varying age. Some of them are newer. I, those are the ones I wear on camera, of course, the nicer looking shirts, the v-necks. But Mainly black, a couple of purple, and a couple of blue, but mostly black. It's my uniform. It's what I wear. So, yes, I do have more than one shirt, in case you're wondering why I'm always wearing the same thing on camera. Wow, this is the most boring stuff ever, isn't it? <laughs> okay, moving on. September 12th, 9-12, was Neil Peart's birthday. Happy birthday to Neil Peart. Of course, we do this in memory of him. Neil passed away. That was a really one of the toughest things I've been through in years. And some of you, are, A, are wondering who's Neil Peart. He's the drummer and the lyricist for the band Rush. Rush happens to be my favorite band. Always will be, always has been. And Neil was not only a drummer. I used to be a drummer. Neil is a prolific and amazing writer of books and, of course, of his lyrics in a blog an artist, just a beautiful mind, a beautiful mind, an intellect that towers above so many. And I miss him. I miss Neil every day. We lost more than a drummer when Neil passed away. We lost more than a lyricist. We lost more than one third of the Trinity of Rush. We lost the wisdom and intellect and his ability to make very complex things understandable. He was an amazing teacher. And there's a reason why we call him the professor. Throughout the Rush community, we call Neil Peart the, the professor. So I miss him dearly. I know all of you do who love Rush and love Neil. I miss him every day. He was a great mentor to me. An amazing mentor to me. So I just want to say happy birthday. I miss you, Neil.
Echoes of Wisdom is out. My first walkthrough is available right now. You can check it out on my channel. And it's just over an hour, and we start off with Link, and then we, we transition to Zelda. She gets her tri-rod. No more spoilers after that. You know that much from the trailers and from reading. But, and then I got up to one of the still worlds, and then episode two is coming soon. I hope to actually do that after I do this. So, guys, thank you for watching. It's been a pleasure playing this game. I'm really enjoying it. The influences from all the other Zelda games is, is huge. And I see stuff from Twilight Princess. I see stuff from Skyward Sword, Ocarina of Time, the old 8-bit versions. So many inf influences from past Zelda games I've seen in Echoes of Wisdom, which is wonderful. I think there's a reason for that. I also reported that I heard, and this came by way of, I'm going to give them credit, Zelda Dungeon. Thank you, guys. They reported on an interview with the creators of the game. And the creator said their reason for having Zelda be the protagonist. And this is what we know, that the gimmick of using the tri-rod uh, was more apt and fit for, say, a character like Zelda, one already established in the game. The game's called Legend of Zelda. Why not give her a game? I'm cool with that. But the thing is, all right, we got the tri-rod, and then how do you go back and forth between sword and shield and the tri-rod? I've given this more thought, though. You guys well know that since Ocarina of Time, where, of course, we have our yellow buttons. I don't have my controller right here, but I, I do have I do have this controller, okay? Or, or Breath of the Wild, Tears of the Kingdom. And, of course, we, we have our button for the sword, but we have these other buttons as well. I don't see why Link couldn't have been the protagonist of Echoes of Wisdom. Because, again, sword... Shield, that's two buttons. All this one of these buttons over here could have been the tri rod. I'm going to give them the benefit of the doubt, and here's why the tri rod acts as a tool to uh, move things around, to create objects, to solve puzzles, but also as a weapon as well. Okay, not just a spin thing that Zelda can do to cut down grass or whatever, but throwing out a spider or a spike ball or one of those green blobs. Um, Zelda can do all those things with the tri-rod, and if you had a sword and shield, you would be using that to attack people and defend yourself. Okay, so, yeah, I can see that. Now, could Link have been the protagonist? Yes. It's just one more button, okay? Could have been the Y button. Could have been the X button. Could have been a button up here. All that could have been with Sword and Shield, Link, but I, I can see from a gimmick standpoint, they want you using a tri-ride for everything. But it is a really fun game. I'm enjoying Echoes of Wisdom. Episode 2 is coming soon. Guys, join me for that. Thank you for watching, and if you haven't seen it yet, do check out my first installment of the walkthrough. If you only knew the power of the dark side, Obi-Wan never told you what happened to your father. I I'm your father. It's been said quite a bit all over YouTube, and you guys can easily find the content and find the channels that have criticized justly so. All, most of them, ever since, say, Mandalorian Season 2, but beyond that, pretty much a garbage fest with regard to Star Wars. It's just, uh, it's not good content. It doesn't respect the lore. Um, there's a lot of reasons why. But here's my thing. It's not Star Wars. Star Wars is what we now call Episode 4, 5, and 6. All right, A New Hope, Empire Strikes Back, Return of the Jedi, what I have right here on my wall, the original trilogy. That's Star Wars. Luke, Leia, Han Solo, C-3PO, R2-D2, Darth Vader, Boba Fett. That's Star Wars. It was one thing to get the prequels, Episodes 1, 2, and 3 starting with Phantom Menace, working all the way to Revenge of the Sith. That was still held on to most of what Star Wars was. We could talk all day long, whether they're good, whether they still stand up, which one was best. That can be hashed over a million times over, but it was still done by George Lucas. The big change happened, of course, when George Lucas sold Star Wars to Disney. That's when the major change happened. 
of course. And yes, I, be I liked Mandalorian. I still do. Seasons one and two are fantastic. I love the characters from the main characters and the secondary characters. Anyway, and, and even Grogu. And I know that that's a gimmick in its own self, but I still enjoyed it. And, and I think Jon Favreau did a really good job with that. After Star Wars got bought by Disney, then we had The Force Awakens and The Last Jedi, and that, which really was, right? They killed Luke with that movie. They killed who he was and changed him forever, and it's a travesty. And in Force Awakens, they, kill, they literally kill off Han Solo. For I love Han Solo. And the way they took him out is disrespectful and wrong. And then moving all the way to The Rise of Skywalker, that, that, those three movies, again, were not Star Wars. It's not Star Wars. I just, you know, as a Star Wars fan, a guy who still has 70 Star Wars figures, I still have ships hanging around my vintage old school ships that I got for Christmas from my parents. They're still in my office. I still have my toys. I have my poster autographed by Mark Hamill and Harrison Ford and Carrie Fisher. May she rest in peace. That's what that poster is right there. I'm an OG hardcore Star Wars fan and all this stuff since then has not been Star Wars. That's the problem with it. It's not Star Wars. And you'll never capture that lightning in the bottle again. You can't. It's impossible. It's like having an amazing party, right? And, you're, and one weekend you have all your friends and family over and it's an amazing party and you play games, you hang out, you socialize, and you have this amazing time. And you're like, I want to do that again. Let's have the same party again. And the next weekend, you invite the same people over. It's not the same party. You can't replicate that. And, and there's a reason for that. Well, what I call lightning in a bottle, um, the Lord of the Rings trilogy, even the Harry Potter movies, the original Star Wars movies, there are these, these movies, right? These cinematic events where a creator had an idea, and whether we're adapting Tolkien or coming up with com something completely new, which is Star Wars, or we're adapting Harry Potter, and those three examples right there, they were allowed to create and be among themselves and have pure creation happen. And this work that ILM did, phenomenal, never to be repeated again, even in the digital age, brilliant. So yeah, there's a reason why it hasn't done well. There's a reason why people are losing money on this IP of Star Wars is because it is not Star Wars. It's not. Now, there are, there are some shining gems along the way that are done well, okay? F whether from animated, and I mentioned Ma Mandalorian, there, there, and yeah, I even like Rogue One, not bad. But everything else in between is, is, is not Star Wars. And it's, it's sad. And, you know, that's why I cling to the original trilogy so much. I have that, at least. And that's special. On another related note, Star Wars related, I've been playing as Luke Skywalker in a full Jedi garb, Jedi black, with his, his cloak, just like he was in the beginning of Return of the Jedi, when he went to see Jabba the Hutt, you know, to save his friends. I've been playing as that in Fortnite. So, a couple of things about Fortnite. One is with all these weapons, right? We have the Marvel weapons and we have all the Doom weapons and the place is just littered. And now the Iron Man drops coming out of the sky and all that weaponry. And it's like everyone has the ability or at least the opportunity to be OP themselves. All right, I've made a video about Dr. Doom, but you know, he's so OP in getting those Doom gauntlets or whether you're his, his chosen in person and then you're just, you know, it's, it's over. It's over. The second you capture that island up there, it's over. Everyone has a chance to be OP, and it kind of levels that playing field. And, uh, and it just, you know, it does, it does make it somewhat better. All right? You do have to fight harder for what you get and how you fight and, and whether to win. Another thing, I got to try Fortnite on the PC for the first time. Wow. I had no idea what I was missing. No idea. The detail the frame rate, the little rocks and pebbles and the blades of grass or, or pieces of leaves and grass blowing through the wind. The color palette must be into the billions, right? The depths of shades of blues and greens. Um, I've been playing on Switch, right? Been playing, and I love my Switch, okay? Been playing on my Switch, but going over to the, trying the PC, and I did record some. I'm gonna be making some videos about it. Mind-blowing, mind-blowing. And I knew that was possible. 
I knew they made it with the Unreal Engine, and that Unreal Engine is, quite frankly, Unreal. It's Oh, that, that software is brilliant. Um, there's a guy that I follow on YouTube who creates uh, original Zelda maps and levels and, and his own gameplay experience, especially from Ocarina of Time. And I'll try to share a link with you, by the way. But his work inside of Unreal of recreating Ocarina in full Unreal Engine brilliance and it's, uh, it's stunning. So I knew the potential was there, that the world of Fortnite could be a lot more detailed. And it is. <laughs> it, it, wow. Mind-blowing. My son, Landon, he was in town. He is an OG, amazing, amazing Fortnite player. He's been playing since, you know, the dawn of time, a lot longer than me. I mean, I'm really brand new to this. And he has one of those really insane special controllers with all kinds of paddles and, and secondary buttons and doing macros. He has an amazing controller to where he plays on PC when he's back home himself. So I got him my controller. Yeah which is, you know, not quite the same. It does have a couple of secondary paddles back here. It's got four buttons here. And, you know, so this is, you know, the 2 go Pro. Great little controller. So anyway, we've had this. And from my PC, I'd run a 50-foot HDMI cable. We can chill out in the living room and play Fortnite on PC. But the point is, though, I recorded him playing uh, Fortnite Reloaded, and he is so good. Oh, he is good. And he even built me uh, buttons back here for both crouching and sliding because he loves to slide and crouch at like the same time. So he built those into these paddles. We mapped this together. We mapped this controller. So we've been doing that. That's been great. Today, I had the honor and privilege of playing with my friend Aaron. And oh, we had such a good time today. Aaron, thank you. It's about time we got to play like that. And he, what I mean is this. <laughs> this is so cool. These are some cheapo, cheapo headphones, right? That I got online. But got a mic. All right. So, and by the way, these are Zelda. That is like Zelda blue. And it has a little Zelda crest inside the, the ear pad. So basically, yeah, I, I was playing and I, doing my Switch, jacked into my Switch. And we were able to talk the whole time. And it was, it was awesome. Such a good time, me and Aaron. I recorded some of that gameplay as well. But Aaron, thank you. Had such a good time, bro. Yeah, we, we, did, really, we did really well. And we had a couple rounds where we called them practice, where we got wiped out pretty quickly. But we had some good hits, some, some pretty good eliminations along the way. So Aaron, man, that was really fun. Thank you, bro. A really big thing is happening. Digital Circus. This is a cartoon that's been on YouTube. They've gotten probably 100 million plus views, minimum, okay? Hugely watched. You probably already know about it, the Amazing Digital Circus. Well, something huge has happened. Big news on that front. On October 4th, a new episode of Digital Circus, Amazing Digital Circus, is coming out. Plus, all three episodes will be available on Netflix. Congratulations to those guys, all right? Congratulations to the creators and the team behind Amazing Digital Circus. It's a cool show. It's a cool animated series. And the fact that you have obviously been given a pile of money from Netflix, good for you guys. All right? You, you're a small independent house creating some pretty cool content. And the fact this is your payday. This is the beginning. So I'm proud of you guys. Good job. October 4th, Amazing Digital Circus, three episodes up on Netflix. Staying in the world of animation. Right now, speak of the devil, on Disney Plus, Inside Out 2. This is one of the highest grossing films of this year for a reason. This is an amazing film. My son and I went to see it in the movie theater. We had a blast, but I walked away. I walked away amazed. This is a great movie, a great family movie. It's a coming of age story, but it also it teaches so many complex psychological, emotional, sometimes borderline spiritual lessons of how to cope and how to live with the things that you experience as you go through life, but also being tempted to do the wrong thing, peer pressure, and then overcoming that. That's just, that's just a tip of the iceberg on that. Inside Out 2, I highly recommend it. Moms, dads, kids, you probably already know, but it's good for anyone. You're right. It is a great family film. 
but it's a good film. It's well made. It's enjoyable. So do check that out. Inside Out 2. I think you're going to like it a lot. I love music. And I always marvel at the fact that music is timeless. In that. Music like smells. All right, You know, you smell an apple pie. Fresh baked bread. A type of flour. And so I could be living right now at my age. But halfway across the country, when I was a little boy, there were, say, a certain kind of flower that either my mom grew or grew naturally outside the house, right? The smell of that aroma, of the flower, the scent of that. And now when you smell that, okay, this is what smells can do. They can associate you with decades past experience and memories. It smells one of the most powerful triggers of memories. So is music. And that's what I mean by Music is timeless. And I, we were just talking about this at work the other night. I give this thought all the time. When I revisit, say, one of my favorite albums is Boston, Third Stage. When I revisit those songs, whether it be the lyrics or music, I am instantly warped back to the times in the past in which I enjoyed that, that album or I enjoyed a certain kind of song. And one of the songs in particular, the last track on the album... That song, it has so many points of reference to my experience growing up on Cape Cod. Music is just so powerful and emotive. And that's why I'm such a big lyrics guy. If a song doesn't have intelligent, poetic, well-written lyrics, I then the music better be really good. But it, it, it is the lyrics and the notes on the page, the music itself. When you hear a certain song, it does trigger you and it pulls you back. could be decades, could be five years, but it triggers memories. You remember where you were when you enjoyed that song. Or maybe it's an 80s song, and you're instantly warped back to you know, whatever age you might be. You may have been a teenager, you may have been a child. You go, oh, wow, I'm back there again. Because you're hearing those notes, and you're hearing that music. Good music is timeless that way. In that time doesn't matter anymore. We're instantly tapping into memories that we haven't even thought of in years. I love that about music. Music can also evoke the emotional state you had back when you enjoyed or you first heard the song. That, that is powerful. So not only are you accessing a memory bank, okay, of past memories, but to tap directly into what emotions you were feeling, how you were feeling at the time, that's stunning. That's powerful. So yeah, the fact that music can do this, connecting us to memories and emotions from the past, good music is, is timeless that way, okay? And all of a sudden, the, the linear nature of our lives, point A to point B to point A to point B to point C, doesn't matter anymore. With music, you jump all of that, and you're back there in the past again. Oh, I just, I love it. And speaking of music being timeless and with regard to how a certain music songs in an album connects us with other points in our lives when i was a freshman in college the new rush a album came out and this is going to date me i don't care i don't care if you know how old i am when i was a freshman in college counterparts came out rush counterparts and that album still to this day if i were forced at gunpoint to choose my favorite albums would be right there in the top five okay i can't pick my favorite rush song i can't pick a favorite rush album but i can tell you what my favorites are counterparts is definitely one of them very soon i'm going to we're, we're going to share together the music and the lyrics from counterpart i really want to share that with you guys uh, because the lyrics are potent and powerful. They're deeply meaningful to me, and I'm wondering if you could also find meaning in them. But if you haven't yet, here's your homework assignment. Guys, go to Spotify, go to wherever, YouTube, or if you own it already, and give Counterparts by Rush another listen. Please do. As we're wrapping things up, I wanted to come full circle. We started off this episode by wishing Neil Peart a happy birthday. Happy birthday, sir. Music is timeless. And your lyrics will live on for the rest of my days. I feel blessed to have them. And so as we say happy birthday to Neil Peart, 
as we recognize how we miss him, I wanted to talk about a song called Double Agent, Counterparts, your homework assignment. And the final stanza, the final part of that song, I wanted to read that to you. The song Double Agent is about the war between, you know, you know that old adage, like you have an angel on one shoulder and a devil on another. There, there's a lot of truth in that. We all have to choose between doing what is right and what is not. Choose between good and what is bad. Between light and darkness. That's what the song's about. And parts of the song talk about doing this on the edge of sleep. And a lot of strange things in our lives, powerful things, can happen on the edge of sleep. And sometime I really want to talk about dreams. Dreams fascinate me. And not to get off on that too much, I want to talk more about dreams on my website, artera.com. There's a link in my bio. I, I have dream journals, and I talk a lot about dreams and what they mean. I find it fascinating. I have for years. So this song addresses that as well. But the choice between darkness and light. In the final part of this song, A, music is timeless in that it connects us. B, yeah, we miss Neil Peart. This is Double Agent. This is the final part, the choice between darkness and light. And it says, on the edge of sleep, I awoke to a sun so bright. Rested and fearless, cheered by your nearness. I knew which direction was right. The case had been tried by the jury inside. The choice between darkness and light. On the edge of sleep, I woke to a sun so bright. Rested and fearless, I was cheered by your nearness. And I knew which direction was right. The case had been tried by the jury inside. The choice between darkness and light. We all have that choice, don't we? Between darkness and light. And I hope that we make the right one. I hope that we choose light. I hope that we choose the right thing to do instead of dark and the wrong thing to do. And I want to wrap this up by recognizing a lot of pain going on right now in the world. We don't always have a reason for why Suffering happens, why devastation happens, but of course, specifically addressing the states that have been so badly beaten and damaged by this hurricane and by the flooding. Our hearts and our prayers are with you, and the families have lost family members. They've lost their homes. They've lost parts of their communities. They've lost their schools and their friends. And I can't fathom the amount of pain going on right now. And if you haven't done so, check out some of the video, okay? Pick a social media, look it up. I mean, start with North Carolina. My sons both live there right now, by the way. And the devastation and the pain going on in people's lives is unthinkable. And again, we don't always know the reason. We don't have to know the reason. We can still help in any which way we are able. Okay? Find a way to help. Even if it's prayer. If you're a believer and you pray, do it. I know I have. Help these people out. So yeah, our hearts, I mean, these are fellow Americans. And I know a lot of you don't live in the States with us. But these are fellow Human beings, aren't they? These are families and friends and people living in communities just like yours, just happens to be a different place, that are suffering right now. And if you can find a way to help them, please do. Because people are suffering. And I know people suffer every day. Every day people suffer. Injustices, evil, darkness. People suffer every day. But when it hits so badly, a swath of a country just taken out. We have to recognize it. We have to feel their pain and do what we can to help. So I pray that you do. And on that note, thank you for being here. I'm glad I'm still here. This is the Loud Boy Experience. I hope you guys have a good night.